Evan Rees here. Today we're talking about mate connectors and uh, the basic mates that you use in Onshape to put assemblies together. I'm talking about the ones above my blue bar here. I am not going to get into all of this stuff today, but uh, this should get us pretty far. So to really understand the difference between mating things in Onshape and other CAD systems, you have to understand the mate connector. It takes a bit of a mind shift, but once you get done with that, I think that you'll be glad you did and realize that it's actually simpler and faster than other systems, but maybe unfamiliar to you. So let's dive in. Um, to fully understand what's going on, I actually modeled a giant mate connector so that we have something clearer to point at. In essence, a mate connector is really just a coordinate system, which means that there is a central origin implied somewhere here, and then there is an X, Y, and Z axis, which I, uh, are denoted with red, green, and blue, same as you see on the view cube, same as you see in many other 3D software. So a coordinate system, uh, and that's it. And these coordinate systems can attach to parts so that when you bring them in, and in fact, this giant mate connector that I've modeled actually has a real mate connector here that I'm using in this demo. Um, so when you mate, use any of these mates, it creates a relationship between two coordinate systems. And the relationship is just some sort of pre-bundled set of degrees of freedom between them. And that is a mouthful, so I'm going to show you because we're here on video. So um, what I mean by degrees of freedom is this. Any coordinate system or any object for that matter, uh, the position of it can be defined by transforms applied to these degrees of freedom. There are six. So we have three translational degrees of freedom. I can move it in any of these directions linearly. And then we can also rotate about any of the axes. So uh, these are also called um, roll, pitch, and yaw in uh, aeronautical terms. Right now I'm demonstrating that there are six degrees of freedom and we're totally not bound to anything. I can translate it in any direction. I can also rotate this thing. Uh, if I drag the middle of my gimbal, I can snap it to an object using an implicit mate connector, which uh, I'll get to in a second. And I can, I can rotate about any of the axes that I want. Um, so these are the degrees of freedom that are available. There are all six. And what we're doing when we create a mate is we're taking a prepackaged set of degrees of freedom to limit to. So let me show you what I mean. If we use a fastened mate between my giant mate connector, which is actually this little mate connector it's attached to, and that mate connector, um, it looks like this. So no degrees of freedom. These are just lined up and it's stuck. And that's it. That's all it takes. So you, you might use this to mate a screw to a hole and it's one mate and it's not going to twist around in the hole. Let me get into the mate itself and you know, the dialogue and show you what that looks like. So um, by default, it'll actually just snap the coordinate systems, the mate connectors together in whatever orientation was closest. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So if I um, just go back to my free mode, and I get this thing close, but I actually rotate it around a little bit and maybe flip it over um, and then come in with my fastened mate from this mate to that. You'll see it's actually snapped in upside down, doesn't necessarily align. That's what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so back to this fastened mate. Um, inside the dialog, we have the ability to flip the axis with this button, and it uh, is going to rotate it 180 degrees about the x-axis. So there you go. And then this one will, um, it says reorient secondary axis. We can use that to clock. Uh, secondary axis is the X axis. The primary axis is the Z axis. So we can use that to clock this thing around and you can use any combination of these to get the correct orientation for your part. Um, hot tip, A will do the flipping and Q will do the clocking. So if you're a hotkey person like I am, that's a great way to go. And if you need um, an even more you know, intermediate position between these two, you can also check this offset button and we can now begin to move this around. So this is mated rigidly, but offset from that by a certain amount. And we can also uh, rotate this 45 degrees. So with all of these inputs, you can get this mate connector, usually put exactly where you want and the relationship where you want. I'm gonna leave them connected exactly on top of each other for this demo. Okay, so Fastened has zero degrees of freedom. Very common way that we want to connect parts. Um, another common one is Revolute. So I'm just working my way left to right here. And uh, Revolute is going to give us one degree of freedom, which is uh, the yaw degree of freedom, rotation about the x-axis. So 
no other degrees are available. I cannot move it in any other way except for just rotating it. So the, the blue line on this mate connector is lined up to the blue line on my big mate connector. And that's it. That's all I have. And uh, next we've got slider. And slider is also just one degree of freedom. It gives us the ability to slide these things along their x-axis together. And this is really good for things like linear actuators or gliding rails, um, things like that, drawer slides. Um, a slider mate is the one to go for. So far, we've only really exposed single degrees of freedom at a time, which is not too dissimilar from other systems. But let's take a look at the planar mate. This one is kind of like a combination of two sliders and a revolute mate. What it gives us is um, the ability to move this thing around uh, but it stays on this plane. So I can't I can't drag it up and down. If I try and drag it up and down, nothing happens. Um, and I can also rotate this. So it's as if this was sitting on a tabletop. Um, and that's a really handy and common uh, way to mate things. But instead of having to do three separate things to get this kind of behavior, I can just do one, which is uh, make, them, make them planar with the planar mate. Cylindrical is uh, going to give us the behavior we would get if I had a cylinder sleeved inside of another cylinder. So it can slide um, in and out, and it can rotate. So I'm locking uh, down all of the x and y degrees of freedom and getting the rotation and translation about the z degree of freedom. Pin slot is kind of an oddball because it actually borrows one of the degrees from the second mate connector you choose. Uh, and it's right there in the name, pin slot. So you choose first the pin. And the next mate connector you choose will be the slot. And the slot is always going to be along the x-axis of the second mate connector. So I can move this thing along that slot, um, but I can also rotate it. Imagine I had a steel pin inside of a slot. I could slide it around, and I could also turn it. So that's what that one defines for us. Ball is going to lock all translational um, ranges of motion and just place the origins of the mate connectors on top of each other with all of our ability to rotate this thing, just like a ball socket. And last, we have parallel, which is going to be very similar to planar, but with the addition of the ability to go up and down in the z-axis, essentially just forcing two faces to be parallel to each other, but otherwise being unconstrained. So that's it. That's the basic set of mates that we have right here in Onshape. Um, there are more advanced ways to get things to relate to each other. Um, you can group things together. You can you know, get faces, tangent faces to slide on each other like you're doing a cam. I can get into these in another video. Um, there's even relationships to give, like uh, to create gears with gear ratios or sliders with ratios and that kind of thing. But um, the basics can be well captured right here. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you noticed this. All of these have the same hotkey, M. And if you think about it, actually, they are all the same exact feature. Clicking the icon just tells you what uh, which one of these from the dropdown you have, which is nice if you need to convert, for example, a fastened mate to a revolute mate later on. All right, so that's the basics, but I do want to show a little bit of power moves here if you want to um, mate things quickly. Let's start this over. Uh, in fact, I'll just start from scratch. So I'm going to push the I key, or you can click this button. Same thing. Uh, and I'm going to my bricks um, part studio where I have configured this brick and it brings in, uh, you know, I can say how many studs I want and all of that. I'm going to generate that and bring it into my part studio and it has mate connectors where I can use them. Um, I can click in space and it'll just be somewhere random or I can push the green check and it will end up on the origin, which is what I want. I'm going to right click the part and hit fix. Um, now this thing can't move around at all. Uh, and I do want to call out that there is actually a really big difference between fixing a part with this menu versus mating it to the origin or to something else. If you have used fix a bunch of places in a subassembly, for example, because all the parts are where they need to be, and then you bring that subassembly into a higher level assembly, none of those fix um, limitations will persist. They're really just in the act of assembly. So your subassembly might fly all over the place. Whereas if they're mated to each other with a fastened mate or just positionally you know, forced to stay together in a group, then it will work. So Really, you should only have one thing fixed in your assembly at any given time, and everything else should be related to that in some way. Um, OK, all right, little aside there. So what we can do if we want to build these things quickly is I can bring in another brick. 
drop it anywhere in space. I can click this mate connector and that mate connector and hit the M key to mate them. Uh, A, because I want to flip the axis. I can use Q to uh, toggle the rotation. So that's a nice way to go, but um, I think we can get a little faster. So I'm going to go back to the insert dialog and I'm going to actually activate this button here, snap mode. Shift S is the hotkey. Um, and if I do that, when I bring this in, you'll see it's this ghosted looking thing and I'm already moused over that one mate connector. And if I mouse over another one, it'll automatically create a fastened mate. You can see the icon there. So that's nice. But if I wanted to choose a different mate connector, I can use the control key to toggle through the options in this brick. And I can still use Q and A to position it the way that I want. So that's a pretty quick way to begin building. Um, give it a little time to think. There we go. And then if I have, I'm going to copy this part and just paste a few of them out here because I know I'm going to want to use a few. With snap mode enabled, you'll notice that whenever I mouse over anything, it creates this little temporary mate connector called an implicit mate connector. And those are really handy. I'll get into those in the next video because there's a lot more to say about mate connectors and they're valuable for a lot more things than just mating things in an assembly. All right, but with snap mode enabled, I can either grab an implicit mate connector or I'm gonna grab one of my existing ones. And you can see we're starting to look at that, like a similar dialogue to what we were just seeing. It's ghosted part and I can just start dragging these together. I need to complete this mate before I can drag the next one, which is also, you know, if I were working quickly here and I wanted to make that a revolute mate, it doesn't make sense in this case, but you know, I can quickly create hinges and things that way with snap mode enabled. But yeah, if you're working in an assembly and you're getting all of this implicit mate connectors popping up and you don't know why it's probably enabled and you didn't want it to be. All right. Yeah. So hopefully that clears up a lot of how you can start putting things together in on shape, especially if you're used to another way of doing it from another system. But there's actually so much more to make connectors. And I find myself using them more often for modeling, even than for putting things together. So in the next video, we're going to use make connectors for everything except for connecting things together. Come and visit me in that one. And we will continue our learning. Thanks for watching.